Hey, John. Hey, hey. Welcome back to Singapore. How hey. was your trip? Oh, wonderful. There's <laughs> lots of stories in Malaysia. <laughs> so, today we're going to be doing stories on Malaysian hotels. Nice. I wonder what song is relevant uh-huh. to that. Hmm. Hmm. What's the first I song wonder. that comes to your mind? <laughs> uh, uh, Hotel Kinabalu. <laughs> <laughs> Hotel Kinabalu. <laughs> okay, so today I actually did my hair. I'm not sure if you can tell. Uh, um, you check out my Alicia mm, mm, Keys meet Ludacris hairstyle. <laughs> I, I, I feel like a rapper. Sleek, sleek. So I'm going you to know, rap sleek. instead of sing. Wow, Hotel like California. Okay. All right. Okay. Oh, oh, All right. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Passeri is in the house. Oh, yeah. <laughs> On a dark desert highway. Cool wind in my hair. Warm smell of colitas rising up to the air. Up ahead in the distance, I saw a shimmering light. My head grew heavy and my sight grew dim. I had to stop for the night. There she stood at the doorway. I heard the mission bell. I was thinking to myself, this could be heaven or this could be hell. Then she lit up the candle and she showed me the way. There were voices down the corridor. Thought I heard them say, take it away, homie. Welcome to the Hotel California. Uh, yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. Such a lovely place. Yeah, yeah. Such a lovely place. See what? Plenty of room at the Hotel mm. California. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Any time of year. Any time of the year. You can find it here. Good Friday evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another episode <laughs> of Friday Night Live with us, your host. My name is Eugene Tay. Hi, Jonathan Lim here. <laughs> and you can probably guess, Jonathan sounds a lot better today. I wonder why. Hmm. We, we managed to uh, exorcise a ghost that was blocking my mic. So suddenly, 
suddenly I have all this potential. Wow. 18 <laughs> episodes in. 18 episodes of getting him an expensive mic compared to his headphone mic. And we only just discovered that we were recording on headphone mic the whole time. <laughs> but I hope the quality hasn't been that bad. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I hope it hasn't been that bad. But yeah. So now uh, get ready for more sexiness. Okay? Mm. Yo, Eugene, you are not the only one uh, <laughs> who, who can read sexy yeah, now. Yeah. I think you're too okay. close to the mic. There's a lot of buzzing sound. Okay. Okay. So, so now I have to get used to it again. Yeah. Oh no, like born again virgin. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to figure this out. All right. Is this better? Yes, it's, be it's yeah. better. It's better. Okay, okay. Wow, I'm stooping in a very strange way. I'm going to get a hunch because of this. Okay, hello everybody. Wow, who was first today? Maureen. Maureen. Maureen, welcome back to the number one spot. <laughs> and we have uh, also Elshin, Adrian Chua. Um, Did he manage to be two? No, the number two? The forever number two guy. Ah. <laughs> he, he gave up trying and he's like, okay, two is the number one spot. Uh, you need to go go to Maureen's house on Friday nights and then you can at least share the number one spot with her. Okay, Log in together. All right. Mm. Um, hello, if anyone is uh, new here today or from overseas, let us know. Yes, uh, Ahmad Pyrus. He's uh, ah. finally able to listen you, to you guys live. Can't wait. You mean you've been listening to us dead? That's strange. Okay. Uh, yeah, welcome, welcome. Someone was just back from Malaysia, apart from you, lah, Eugene. Mm. Uh, who was it uh, who was just back from? Isabella Rosta, just back from Malaysia. So mm. maybe you have some stories to share also. Hmm. Mm. The usual gang are here. Yeah. Frankie, Sean Lim, Imagine Malayans, Nikki. Gillian Fernandez, who wants to buy a t-shirt from us. Thank you very much, oh, Jill. Yes. Please do. So yeah, yeah. If you guys Ooh. want to buy a t-shirt as well, uh, you can go and check out the three different designs or four different designs that we have on supernaturalconfessions.com on website. Just go click shop. You'll find my books for sale, my t-shirts for sale. Mm. <laughs> Abun. Hello, Abun. KK. Kenny Polaris. Who is uh, Achille Saris? Achilles yes. Saris. Is that new? Hmm. Sounds familiar. Okay. Maybe I've not been in here for a while. Hello, Achilles Saris. Can Fat you... zombie movies. I love that so much. Fat zombie <laughs> movies. Hello. Yeah, we have Candy Chia. We have Nikki. Carlos Cecilia Raku. Peng. Mm. Ultra Warrior. <laughs> Jeron. Wow, Jeron it's been Lee. so many weeks, right? It feels like it's been ages. Actually, it's only been one week, but it feels like I've missed you guys, man. Two weeks lah. <laughs> One week. No, we had a <coughs> yeah, we had a special. We ah. had a special last yeah, correct, minute correct. special. Yeah, so not bad, not bad. The Zoni Nava. <laughs> L L said something like L said, "Hey, Jonathan can sing." Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. L, you must you you must know Thank in you, many L. of the episodes, you know, we have <laughs> talked about how many things John can do. This guy is taking talents away from people. It's not fair. Extra extra statistics that people don't have. No, no, this is proof that God is fair. <laughs> okay. We got, got Fenris at Marie. I think that's a new one. Fenris at Marie and C. Hmm. ZP Matt, all the way from Germany. Yeah. Hello. Angel Singapore. Han J. <laughs> uh, Vicky Chan Mei Yen Sai wow. Prasad Great Spiker <laughs> Who's JRT? Am I looking at New the wrong? Yes, yeah. J JRT New JRT says welcome back JRT. Eugene oh, oh, right. Thank okay. you JRT Alessandra Brina Asking the very important question Eugene got extra baggage or not? I don't know because You all tell me <laughs> Can you all see? Is there a Chiobu standing behind him That wasn't there before? Uh, all these things you know, are. can screenshot so, then circle circle la. draw draw circle, circle. <laughs> yes okay because when we did his uh, last check in uh, two weeks ago we said please do not come back from Malaysia with uh, unwelcome ghosts <laughs> okay but come back with artifacts and haunted yeah. objects that can go into our museum yes I, I have I have some I got I got a couple of artifacts that the ghost king yes. gave me as well Ah, uh, oh, Amos have, Ow, mm. hello from Sydney. Yay. Mm. Okay. We have Donut. Is a, donut guy. Donut? Goat. Um. Mm. <laughs> okay. Isabel Rasta says, I was in Perak and Kedah. Didn't mm. experience much, just the security at the Kampung. Oh. Mm. oh, the security at the Kampung Hotel I was staying at was wearing traditional outfit. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> I wonder for what kind of security. Oh, interesting. Vince uh, Lee says, welcome back, Eugene. Thank you. RSVP by mm. Grace is here as well. Abun! Did I say League um, of Angels and Mr. David? Yeah, say it. Okay. Yeah. Lucas. Hi, Lucas. <laughs> Frankie, uh. that can bear range. Bear. 
Did you get nasi lemak in the end? Vince God, is asking. God, God, oh, ah. Is it a famous nasi lemak oh, or just no. anyhow? Uh, yeah, actually, any, any food in Malaysia, you throw stone also, it tastes better than Singapore nasi lemak. Ah, <laughs> okay. Oh, Paris says, happy wedding anniversary to Eugene and Grace. Mm, thank you, thank you. Oh, yay. <laughs> seven <laughs> years. I survived seven years. Woohoo! <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, and of course, the, the Grace that we are talking about is also here with us. Say mm, hi, Grace, to yeah. so everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The RSVP by Grace, that's the one. So, yeah. Uh, night owl? Okay. Mm, okay. So I think we okay. said, so said a bit of. We know. Mm. We, okay. So as you can see, the chats move very fast. All right. And today, there's going to be a lot of stuff worth sharing like, because we're talking about something that's, you know, that everyone has had a taste of, right? You know, which is the being haunted when overseas, you know? So if you have a burning question or a burning comment that you want to share, tell us how, how they can do that. All right. Can... So uh, there is a dollar sign below the chat function. You click on that. It's called mm. a super chat or a super thanks. Yeah, you can put in mm. any amount you want uh, just because you love us, you enjoy today's story. Mm. And trust me, today's story was is going to be really really exciting uh i'm not biased really when i edit it i really felt it so you will love it and if you do love it enjoy it tonight like you make mm. your friday night and you want to contribute something to us click the dollar sign put in any amount you want quite frankly uh we are cheaper than going to the movies last so be generous with us uh also if you want to uh commit mm. to a long-term commitment you're a long time fan of supernatural confessions and you mm. feel that hey for just as low as five US dollars a month or twenty four US dollars a month, you can join us as a patron. And you yeah. know, uh, link is patreon.com slash supernatural confessions. And at mm. this time, I'd like to thank my sentient entities, Chua Elaine. She's been here yeah. every week and she's not only she a patron, she's also very generous in the chat session. Uh, <laughs> Alsatian Adrian Chua whose name I finally managed to pronounce right finally pronounced correctly wow. yes. Alsatian that's gonna cost you okay. <laughs> M, M. Ko Grim ZP Matt Queen Lai Saravanan Lim Tech Chuan uh, yeah. in the Wandering Spirits category we have Karina J Joel Go, Deborah Confield uh, who's coming mm. back in September with the sister Linda Confield yeah. we have JK To VL Linda Hayden Ili, Ili X uh, mm. who I'm going to meet oh Ili X Happy birthday. Her birthday was yesterday. Oh, two days ago. Yay. <laughs> okay. Happy belated. Belated. <laughs> Restless Souls. We have Toh Su Chie, Grace Chai, Candy Chia, Ron, Jack Ong, and Kenny Polari. So if you want to put your nice. name to this list, uh, show us your, your love and dedication and commitment to this community as we grow together, patreon.com mm. slash supernatural confessions. Yay. Can they still buy coffee for us? Or is that and something we've stopped? You can oh, also buy okay, coffee. Okay. The coffee. Mm. Uh, if you want to buy coffee, maybe you feel, you know, like, um, <laughs> you know, Patreon is too much of a commitment. You just want to buy coffee. It's mm. buymeacoffee.com slash superconfess. But you usually have that mm. have that before we realize super chats exist. So now people just click on super <laughs> chats and no one buys ah. coffee anymore. <laughs> <laughs> the more options, the merrier, yes, I always yes. say. Okay, so what are we talking about today? Hmm? Okay, today. Yeah is mm. hotel stories. This is part two of our hotel mm. theme stories. Uh, part one was, uh, do you remember part one? It was... Uh, I can't remember which, which March, week it March, was. In March. Yeah, I yeah. remember. All, what I remember most is your theory that is the corner room that always gonna. So we uh, shall see whether that theory holds true tonight. Eh? Yes. I, I'm aiming to debunk it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the last time we went for the hotel stories, we were talking about unusual stories. Today, hmm. we'll be talking about in-your-face horror stories. Full uh, on. Yeah, this is uh, stream three months ago, episode five. Check it out, okay? The, pre the yeah. first installation. Today, <laughs> will be the kind of stories that I guarantee if you are on the fence, skeptic, you are the kind who, mm. let's rationalize this, rationalize that. Mm. Today's story will push that logical mind to the limit. And because mm. I've spoken to these confessors myself, in mm -hmm. fact, I have the audio recording of this, some of these confessions uh, mm -hmm. taken outdoor with my handphone, so it's very um, fuzzy. Mm -hmm. And some of them are 30 minutes long, 45 minutes long. So wow. I had to crunch them down to <laughs> something that we can tell tonight. Uh, mm. But from my personal experience, talking to them, mm -hmm. hearing them do the whole goosebumps thing and everything, uh, <laughs> it's not fabricated. Also, no reason to fabricate. 
Some mm. of them wanted to remain anonymous. So mm. spending coffee on me and telling me their story <laughs> with no returns at all, uh, I would like to believe that what they told me is their true encounter. And mm. even sitting there listening, cutting mm. and editing, I, John, I felt the shiver. And at times, I wonder, because I'm reading so much of these stories, are mm. there any entities around me that I may have summoned? You know what we talk about, right? When you talk about ghost stories, they are around you. I mm. do think that today's story might give you guys that shiver. Okay, but do remember also, okay, don't give up. Huh? <clears throat> just because it's scary and just because got goosebumps does not mean that there wasn't a rational explanation behind what gave you goosebumps, mm, mm, right? Mm. Because goosebumps are also natural. Mm. <laughs> or when a ghost okay. pass through you lah. Uh, it, no, goosebumps is not the hantu pinch you or what. Right? <laughs> it's because <laughs> it's medical, okay. right? So, so the rational folks out there, don't give up yet. Don't give up yet, okay? Yeah, we will knock that smile off you, <laughs> <All Okay. right? laughs> To help us today to narrate mm. uh, one of the stories is a voice that is very familiar to many of you mm. if you have been around for some time. Oh, Ooh. sorry, John. I need, uh, I need to give a shout out. I promise this yeah. guy I'm going to give him a shout out. Okay, sure. Who's this guy? His name is Edward, also known oh. as Ambient Walker. Mm. And he works at Mel's Place along uh, East Coast Road. Okay. So okay. I was there yesterday having dinner. <laughs> and, you know, I was paying the bill and everything, giving my compliments mm. to the chef for an awesome burger. And then uh. the manager was like, hey, there's a, one of your fans here want to take photo if you cannot. Like, of wow. course. Wow. So, you know, this Edward guy came up, all sh- all smiley and everything. And I said, Aww. come on, come on, let's take a selfie together. Aww. And, uh, you know, he says, I saw you come here before and I want to take with you, but, you know, I always get to ask. <laughs> so nice guy, so nice guy. He's leaving uh, the job on the 7th of July. So if any of you are living in the east side, Mel's mm. place, go down, check it out. The drinks are really cheap during happy hour. Uh, one mm-hmm. pint is like eight bucks. Uh, they are burgers right. to die for. And look for this guy called Edward. Okay? And if you're a fan what? of Supernatural Confessions, give him a mm. high five. What does he do? What does he do at Mel's place? Uh, he waits at the table and he takes your order ah, and makes sure that you get your food just nice. right. Nice. Mm. Yeah. So so maybe there's a way that you can like show that you are a Supernatural Confessions fan at the table and then he will give you special treatment. You're like, Who knows? SC. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> wear know, wear your sign. SC t-shirt. Wear your SC t-shirt yeah. or the cap yeah. or the tote bag <laughs> and the Edward will be like lurking around your table extra. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> extra know? fries, yeah, extra wheat potato or something for you. La. <laughs> you are. Okay, so hello Edward. Hello Edward. Mm. Thank you for being part of the community and yes, you have had your moment with Eugene. Congrats. Mm. Okay. So, <laughs> okay, so yes, uh, tell us about our special guest today. Our special guest, her name is Lee Chia and mm. she's the voice that has been narrating our confessions in the last era. So, bringing her today <laughs> as a guest to narrate and dissect with us is Lee Chia. Ooh, hello. Hi. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Hello, hello. <laughs> so blue, you <laughs> Hi, Lee Chia. So, uh, how is it like being on the other side this time? Not just, not just narrating, but actually being on the show with us. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> mm. I'm very excited to be here, but uh, also a bit nervous because honestly speaking, right, most Friday nights around this time, I'm sleeping. La. So unfortunately, <laughs> I miss the live shows, but I always watch the replays. Uh, but not yeah. the same. The repeat is not the same already. <laughs> That's yeah. true. No, but when I when I see the replays, I will also open the live chat and then see what people are commenting. Mm. Correct, correct. That's correct. cool. That's yeah. cool. So if you have, if you, well, you will definitely have questions for Licia and suggestions and comments. Please shoot them out in the chat. Okay, she. We are all all three of us are trying to keep up with the chat. Mm. Okay, so hopefully one of us will catch it. But if you really really want us to respond uh, to your comment, super then click uh, the dollar sign. Super, super chat. chat. Us, mm. All right. So no, confirm come. guarantee we'll read on. Uh. <laughs> yes, for sure, for sure. <laughs> okay, we will get chatting with Pizza a little bit later on, mm. but I think we are all just dying to hear that voice again, huh? mm. doing what she does best. So we have our first narration. Tell us about that, Eugene. Presenting the first confession. This is called Hotel mm. Room Downgrade and it's confessed by TH. Location of this hotel uh. in Black. So all the uh, those who are living in Malacca at the Elaine Chuas make uh, some noise. <laughs> all right, and try to guess which hotel it is. <laughs> Take it away, Lichia. Over to you. The hotel I stayed at is no longer in operation. I think they shut down during the COVID pandemic era. Also good lah, because I think by the time the lockdown was lifted and people started staying there again, 
they have to fight for space with the resident ghosts. I went there for work and stayed in a hotel alone. My needs are simple. I just need a place to sleep. Morning, I go out to Makan, I go for meetings, I come back at night, shower and sleep. The chambermaid's life is very easy. Nothing much to clean. Even the instant coffee packets, toothbrush, soap and shampoo, all I don't touch. When I arrived at the hotel, I had a bit of a booking issue. Because I wasn't the one who booked it, it was done through the client's company. They couldn't find my records to check me in. Also, it was a weekend, so the admin department wasn't working. My contact told me to just get another room first and he will file for reimbursement. There were a couple of big festivals happening at the same time in Malacca, so the hotel was fully booked. Other hotels around the area are the same as well. So I boy with the hotel staff. I begged them to help me find a room. I don't even mind taking a downgrade. After a bit of chatter and let me ask so and so, the manager finally got back to me and said that they have a suite for me. Wow, that's a massive upgrade. He told me to come back in an hour's time as they will need some time to prep the room. I went to Makan first and came back in an hour. The first thing I noticed when I stepped into the room was that it smelled a bit musky. Like the type of old room that hasn't been cleaned or used in a while. But it's a huge room with a walk-in wardrobe. There's an area for sleeping and another area for watching TV. I didn't really care that much because I won't be in the room for long anyway. I left everything as they were, changed into a new set of clothes and left the room. When I came back that night, my room was a total mess. It was as if an 80s rock band had a party. Contents from my luggage were strewn all around the place. The drinking glass by the kettle had shattered. So I went down to the front desk and demanded an explanation. Politely, of course. The manager I met in the afternoon was still on duty. Sir, I'm so sorry for your experience, he said calmly and with a tinge of regret. We really don't have any other rooms available. And you said you didn't mind a downgrade. I stood there to process the exchange. He looked at me and I looked at him. And then it dawned on me what he meant. A downgrade, you say? Yes, sir. A downgrade, he said, nodding slowly with a polite smile. I went back up to my room. I spoke out loud to whoever was in the room. I'm sorry for taking your place. I'll be here two more nights and then I'm gone. Thank you for sharing your room. In response, the toilet door just slammed shut. Hey, fuck lah, I don't have a choice. You think I want to stay here? Ah, fuck, I also got paid out, okay? You and I both. Like it or not, suck it up. You have me for the next two days. I opened the toilet door and went to shower. In my mind, I was too pissed to care. I think short of the hantu appearing in front of me, I can deal with any petty poltergeist activities. I went to bed and knocked out. That night, I had a very brief dream. In my dream or shallow sleep, I can't be sure, I saw a woman in a traditional red wedding gown standing by the foot of the bed. Her face was covered by the red silk handkerchief. I felt anger and sadness from her. When I woke the next morning, I left the mess just as it was. I didn't bother cleaning up. I didn't want to give the ghost the satisfaction of throwing a tantrum again. For the next two days, there were no further activities. The dream of the woman in the red traditional wedding dress still persisted briefly before I fell into deep sleep. But otherwise, there was nothing new. Before I left, I asked for the hotel manager again, and thankfully he was on duty. I thanked him for the room nonetheless and assured him my stay was pleasant and that I wasn't going to leave a negative review. I asked him if he knew the background of the woman in the red wedding gown, but he looked at me puzzled, as if he didn't understand what I was asking. I decided not to pursue it and left the place. <laughs> wow, I think I have nothing but admiration for this hotel guest, man. Wow, that is the right attitude. Okay? <laughs> and I, I must uh, give a bit of a warning to our audience today. There will be a lot of F-bombs throughout today's confession. Okay? <laughs> so cover your kids' ears. Yeah. Okay. Uh, big shout out to uh, Elaine. 
thank you for your donation. It is a happy anniversary gift. Thank oh, you. so thank cute. You. Yeah. So sweet. Yeah. Quick shower him with love, guys. Come on. <laughs> thank <laughs> you. <laughs> A lot of people out there have been like, wow, very, very, very excited, both about the 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 way um the guest handled the ghost, but also the way our narrator handled the F word. Okay, <laughs> like so natural. I'm like, yeah, I, <laughs> I so totally innocent, agree. Innocent, uh, uh, but actually, she also quite wow. Uh. <laughs> mm, but but she says it like just so calm, like uh, without batting an eyelid. Uh, like, mm, it's just a normal <laughs> word, you know. Wow, I love it. I love it. So natural. <laughs> so okay, so let's talk about this. Let's talk about this story. So what is what is your take, Litia, on 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 this? Mm, I think first of all, if mm. I came back and like some supernatural entity, instead of scaring me, right, messed up all my belongings, mm. I would throw some F-bombs also. <laughs> <laughs> natural. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's understandable. Um, I think there are some things which are very hard to explain from a rational point of view. So first mm. is all the belongings around the room. And mm. normally you wouldn't think... that. Uh, a person or hotel staff would do that and if mm. there's like nothing missing then probably mm. wasn't like a robbery or somebody trying to steal your stuff mm. yeah and most hotel staff right they're very responsible they just want to get their stuff done clean up your room and sell so mm. they also don't have any like incentive to like throw your stuff around uh, especially if um there's no criminal activities and they're mm. not trying to take anything from you so i find that part very hard to explain uh, the part about the lady in the red wedding gown mm. um, before sleep, right? Um, yeah, or shallow sleep, right? Shallow yeah, sleep, so yeah. for that, um, I think one possible like scientific explanation or quote mm. unquote huh, mm. is that uh, because there's some festivals in Malacca, right? I don't know mm. whether maybe those festivals, right? There's like um, people performing and they're dressed up and then maybe the narrator sees one of these people mm. and mm. the costume may have very... Uh, very deep impression on mm. him. And yeah. then when he went, went back, he like subconsciously thought about it. Lah, and that mm. translated into the lady in the red wedding gown. Mm. Uh, so I feel like that part, right, maybe can sort of explain with a semi-logical reason. Mm. But the belongings around the room, I, I really have no explanation. Mm. Maybe it's really some like murdered, vengeful a uh, lady in a red wedding gown mm. standing in his room and going like, hey, why you invade my space, ha? Huh? And then you <laughs> scold me some more, ha? Huh? Uh, like, <laughs> you know, in Chinese, it's like, la means mm. I'll show you like who's boss. So that could be a possibility. <laughs> but she quite forgiving, huh? Once go and then she sort of retreat, right? It's like, you know, she wasn't yeah. trying to strangle him in her red wedding dress. She mm. was just standing there like, uh-huh. maybe he's not her type, la. sorry. What <laughs> landasani, <laughs> 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 you know? No, but re- I, I'm, sorry, reading yeah. the, the, the the comments that's coming in, a lot of people mm. do agree that if you mm. use the F bomb or use aggression to deal with haunting, yeah. you actually mm. your your yang chi will scare off the correct. Yin chi. Correct. Mm. Yeah, because the one thing that is not yin is swearing. Mm-hmm. Right? So <laughs> yeah, I think it, it sort of uh increases your energy, it increases also your your the sense that you are not one to be bullied. Mm. Right, you're not here to be stepped stepped on, to be walked over, you know. And I think that immediately sets a different a different. Well, first of all, she forgot to do one very important thing, right? Which is she never knocked door. She forgot mm. her SC rule number one, you know. <laughs> and maybe that first night of vandalism wouldn't even have happened if she had made her negotiation first. Mm. Right, mm. so unfortunately, maybe that ghost was like waiting for someone to knock the door and ask politely, and then she didn't. Uh, then she pissed off. <laughs> right, you know, so so do remember, do your due diligence, okay? Be respectful first before the hantu get upset, right? You know, <laughs> uh, on the other hand, okay, speaking rationally, uh, it could be possible that everything there is unconnected. Oh. That the first that the first night, someone vandalized her room, okay, you know, or someone just came in and caused trouble. Maybe they're looking for the diamonds and they didn't find the diamonds. Then they had to go next door and <laughs> look for the diamonds elsewhere. Okay, so the first one might just be a crime thriller happening. Mm. Okay, and then the second night she saw something and maybe it's a transference or maybe, you know, yeah, so it's like poor woman in red, maybe she didn't mess up your room. Mm. <laughs> mm. So we don't know. We It's very easy to take multiple uh, incidents and craft a story out of them, but we don't know. Sometimes you, it could be two or three different things happening to you. Maybe all are ghosts. There's a portonite on portuguese on day one and then red dress on day two. 
Like, right, you know, they it's take their turns. version of the Hotel California. <laughs> yes, exactly. You know, so hard to say. Eugene, of course, you believe that. No, I, I, I love the discussion <laughs> today because clearly, from uh, uh, Lee Chia's perspective, she, she reminds me of ET. She speaks very calmly, you know, to point this logical <laughs> explanation, and mm. and it's very believable because you know, in, in the way she, she, she dissects it. I was mm. thinking, yeah, you know, it could be right because she's. It was a festival. She got that point right. She, <laughs> he could have seen... Oh, the confessor's a he, by the way. Mm. TH could have seen uh, someone dressed like that. And that image of the woman mm. made may have no bearing on the poltergeist activity at all. Mm. right? And then, of course, on John's side, and John is always famous for, you think there's only one ghost? Hey, there's multiple <laughs> ghosts. It's not just one haunting. So again, you know, this is like the best of... And that's what this dissection is about. Um, mm. My sense is, yeah. again, I, I would... Uh, agree with Lee Chia here. Housekeeping mm. will not mess up your place. If anything, they are just yeah. going to mm-hmm. still, if if at all, to <laughs> mm. not make their presence known if they are going of to course. try to sneak yeah. something. Yeah. Um, but what to me was a telltale sign was, and again, this is, maybe I'm just superstitious, but when a hotel says, we are full, and mm. one of the comment section as well, people say, that's a red flag. When the hotel yeah. say it's full, please don't go begging and asking for another room. They yeah. know better. Um, <laughs> and when he came down and he he mentioned about the, ho- the hotel being messed up and everything, mm. I would imagine, logically mm. standpoint, the manager mm. would be, I'm so sorry, sir, let me go and check it out, etc., etc. Correct. But yeah. his response was telling. He mm. was, I'm sorry, regretful, but you say you're okay for a downgrade and there was Correct. no further action. And then so I buy that I buy that yeah. totally the very fact that they already you know I know and we know is a downgrade ah, you know that it's common enough Correct. it has happened often enough times that everybody mm. knows that to me is more proof than anything Correct. else so- <laughs> actually I thought it was quite weird how when uh, I think TH right TH was checking mm. out uh, he asked the scene manager like uh, mm. so so what about this lady ah? and then the guy was like huh what, 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 what. Mm, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I thought that was like a bit suspicious. So I don't know, is it like the manager trying to like siam his responsibilities or he like genuinely doesn't know lah. And then he uh, thought it was like like some putter guys or like some child ghost throwing stuff around. And then it turns out that it's like a vengeful mm. lady spirit. So, so TH saw more than they know, right? And he's like, huh? Yeah. You mean it? Either that or the ghost can, you know, sometimes they like take different forms, right? Um, mm. Or they take the form of uh, somebody that you fear the most. Uh. So I feel mm. like sometimes it's also a reflection of our inner like desires. TH fears fear. marriage. <laughs> yeah, TH fears a Chinese bride. I see. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but also, it's also possible that having admitted it when it was at the start of her stay, uh, his stay, right? Now that he's checking out, Right, the manager is basically hinting, uh, no, there's no such thing, no haunting, mm, no, no, mm. no, right? It's like, yeah. what, what haunting, what woman? Like the guy who's working, <laughs> uh, also, thank you very much, VM, you are amazing as well. Yay, thank uh-huh. you. So, I, I believe if I'm the manager working in the hotel, I'm not going to lose my job. Like, even mm. though I know it's haunted, I'm never, you're never going to hear me say those words. So, yeah. I'm going to work Bodo. Uh, but yeah. the previous night, where, or the two nights ago, when he, uh, he that one, it, to me, that was clear. Yeah, you had to do something because the guest is there. But now that the guest is leaving, you hope that they will leave with no mm. no 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 stories to tell. Mm. Like, huh? Right? Haunting? Denied. What haunting? Denied. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, you get in trouble, right? For verifying this woman mm. in red. Mm. That's know? true. Yeah. The fact that it's a bride is very interesting also. You know, because I, it's not... It's not common. I, I when, mm. when I heard red, I thought, aha, aha, vengeful, vengeful, mm. right? Yeah. But then it's a wedding dress. So that's mm. not vengeful. No, I'm, I'm thinking, right? So... Mm. Uh, the we are, I'm making the assumption that ah. the entity mm. is what he's seen now. Okay, so that's my okay. assumption. Okay, why is she? And it's a it's a suite. Uh, so again, bridal wedding suite. I can <laughs> I can imagine there was a correlation there. It's not like a a, a super deluxe room, you know. <laughs> right? Could she have been so heartbroken that she jumped off that mm. hotel room, or something so tragic happened? That the mm. imprint of her spirit is stuck in that room. And Do we for know what floor? Top floor. I mean, sweet. Is, I would assume. Like, my assumption is top floor. La. Mm, sweet, la. Not necessarily, mm. but okay. Mm, but high floor, la, not, not, not second floor, third floor, yeah, la, sweet, la, right? Course. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. And the fact that the room is not in use, so mm. the haunting 
I would say perhaps it's not just uh, a figment of his imagination or he's exhausted, he's a target. It probably mm. enough people had encountered problems in the room that the hotel said, okay, mm. let's oh, yeah. close. Yeah. And mm. he walked in, it's musky. Again, that, that tells me mm. the room yeah. has not been used in a while. Mm. And because he says, I don't mind a downgrade to the hotel lingo, I'm guessing again here is if you tell the <laughs> front desk, I don't mind a, a downgrade <laughs> and they give you an upgrade, you know yeah. the room is that's like a lingo for I want Reflex. a haunted room. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. I like the idea that um um it could have been I mean <clears throat> he did mention that he could feel the sadness coming off her. Mm. Right? So there is there sadness is an, and anger. anger. And and yeah. anger. So there is there is obviously a human story behind her presence there, right? Mm. Yeah, and and yeah, it's quite possible. Quite possible. I wish that the manager had had confirmed the suspicion yeah. and told the story 20 years ago this bright you wow, know but I would love that okay too la. it's not good. okay la. he yeah. had to protect himself so everyone everyone out there was guessing uh, Hotel Equatorial I have no idea I don't know the hotels <laughs> there I don't know why everyone guessed that hotel is it a very famous hotel <laughs> okay but yeah, Eugene like I think you... Elaine said someone um jumped from the building mm. for that particular hotel ah, there. Ah, okay. Elaine's in Mlecca by the way so she should know all this local law mm. of, her, of her place <laughs> Okay, but let's not get anyone in trouble. Okay, <laughs> let's not name names. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's see. Are there any other theories out there in the group? Uh, okay, so uh, RSVP by Gray say that, because uh, people say that if you curse and swear at the spirits, you would frighten them. RSVP mm. by Grace has another con- uh, theory. She says, if you address the spirit, you are letting the spirit know you can hear, see, or feel the spirit and in fact mm. might attract the spirit to be attached to you. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So if you can, if it's low level haunting and you can ignore it, just ignore it. Hey, but John, have I shared with you start... my my ah, four uh, my four stages of what to do when you have a haunting? Ah uh, yes. Wow. Yes. I have, share again. Uh. Share again. It? Share again. When, no la, but I remember I learned from SC <laughs> that if you're a guy, right, just you know pull out your ding dong and then shake it around. That's the level five. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so it has to he has to he has to escalate towards pulling out your ding dong. Uh, okay. Yeah, but, but okay, you, you, you say first, you say first. Stage okay, one, come. if you uh-huh. go into a hotel room and you feel there's a haunting and things are moving, first of all, ignore. Do not mm. acknowledge your presence, hoping that perhaps in time, the ghost will go, oh, Sienna, this guy cannot see me. He don't bother. Okay? Mm. If the haunting escalates, level two, what you want to do is nicely tell the spirit, like, like what TH did. TH said, Hey, I'm only gonna be here for three days, ah. Uh, please, ah, uh, I you know don't disturb me. I sorry, I don't. Please share the room with me. Polite mm. negotiation, right? Mm. Goes escalates the haunting. Step uh, slam, three. Slam bathroom door. Ah, uh. slap, <laughs> step three. You don't play nice anymore. You f bomb the spirit, ah. Uh, or f mm. f f f f show aggression. Show your young tea, ah. Uh. I suggest you have Litya on speed dial. You just call her and she will do for you in a very natural, easy sounding way. Uh, you just call me after like a long meeting at work. Yeah. That's it. Happy to oblige. But also, please know that Litya sleeps at 10 o'clock. La. She cannot make it in time for FNL. You yeah. will not be able to pick up the phone at 12, la, okay? <laughs> yeah. And then, step four? Step four is when the even after you score the spirit, the spirit still will show you uh, that it can mm. throw a glass across the room and shatter it. Uh. Step mm. four is you apologize. Sorry, la. sorry, sorry. Yeah? <laughs> Step five, like what Lichia said. Actually, I got this from the Filipinos. <laughs> Filipinos and Thai believe that the spirits are afraid of a naked man. So, mm. take it off. Tuatiao, tuatiao. <laughs> and shake it all around. So, this is a very old folk tradition, actually. Uh, even uh, in, in early Malaysia, mm. right? Uh, they used to do that. You know, there, there, there was what, this... There was a hantu laut. There was a sort of huh. sea spirit, you know. And if 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 the hantu laut is bullying you and giving you stormy waters, huh? mm. one fisherman just go to the front of the boat and bear all, and the tide will, you know, the storm will abate. That's how powerful a ding dong can be. And not apparently. just bear all. Huh? You got to do the helicopter, no? <laughs> oh, I see. I see. Okay, <laughs> must do a go go show. Ah. Huh? Okay. 
But then again, if your ghost is a uh, frustrated bride on her wedding night, uh, then she that might be just what she's waiting for, man. <laughs> she's oh, like, yeah. why, I haunt, why I haunt so many times no one's flashed their ding-dong at me. <laughs> That's what she was waiting to do. Yeah. She knew the five steps and she was waiting for someone to flash the ding-dong. I, I break the like, glass. And sadness because she's like, hey, you, why frustrated. you never flash me? Is it I'm not pretty enough well, or something? She's actually so, frustrated. So, the story is not that she died there. Huh? The story is that the groom ran away. The, the, maybe the groom jumped. The groom jumped and she's left there like, hey, excuse me. Where's oh, my wedding man. night? Where's oh. my wedding night? <laughs> Ding dong's now. <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> So uh, maybe uh, TH wants to go back and try again. Oh, man. Okay. <laughs> how, long ago, huh? how long ago was this story? Any, uh, Pre-COVID. Any, pre-COVID. It? He said it was pre-COVID. pre-COVID. So mm. uh, not, not like recently pre-COVID. So I don't think it's 2019. It's probably... Mm. 2016, 17, 18, like a couple of years before COVID happened. I'm very curious to know if she's still there. I, and what did she do for three years? When, oh, hotel closed already. Hotel uh. closed already. What a shame. Okay. Mm. Ah. Where did she well, go? I think, I think people are sharing some other um, you wanna read it scary out? hotel yeah. stories. Read Anything. It yeah. Ooh, okay. do, read, it, read it out first. Do the, do the honors. I, I only know the former Riverview Hotel got violent murder. One tourist decapitated another and dismembered him and threw his body parts into the Singapore River. Riverview oh dear. Riverview Hotel. Ah, okay, okay, mm. okay. Yeah. Oh. The, I think that's the Robertson Key one, is it? Yes, correct. correct. Yeah. That's happened. And then, uh, yeah, then we have uh, Mark Shippo says a man jumped to his death from the 18th floor of a hotel at Malacca Raya. On oh, December dear. 10th, 2019, the remains of the 44-year-old were discovered in an alley behind the hotel. Mm. Yeah. Singapore I mean, still the... a lot. Huh? Hotel stories, a lot of them are covered up. They are not uh, told to the public. Mm. <laughs> okay, VM, uh, this one not a hotel. Uh. VM says, I heard from, from his grandma that when spotting a Pontiana, show her the breasts and she will feel paise and go away. Uh, uh. <laughs> I love this. Okay, I love this. Although it's not today's topic, okay? Maybe another day we will talk in detail. But this is a very old tradition, VM, because the old belief, right? The very, very old Malay belief is that the Pontiana's breasts are on her back. Oh. Her tete are behind. And that is why she's ashamed, right? She got she got body image issues. So if you flash so your health, if you flash your healthy front facing breast at her, she'll be like, nah, babe. And she'll just fly away. Okay? So if you're a guy, can you also do the same thing? At least your nipples are still in the right position. Uh. So yeah, I think so. I think so. But just in case, uh, uh, nipples and ding dong together, like just in case. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, best of both oh, worlds. So okay. yeah. You're right, so I, I love how these old traditions are there. Your grandma is right, okay, VM. Got some, got some uh, <laughs> comments coming in. What if the entity is gay? What entity is chico pe? Uh, wow, <laughs> tough man, tough. I think then try all lah, try, try, try all lah. Bring a bring a friend, bring a yeah. friend. Tra- travel in pairs, yeah. <laughs> one male, one female. Flash everything, and something will work lah. Mm. So Elaine also <laughs> says Aldi Hotel. My dad used to have a share in that. Uh, I have actually two confessions from Aldi Hotel. Very short one. Oh. Um, should I share them now, John, or later? Later. Yeah, why not? Now, why uh? not? Since we are here, yeah. Okay, Aldi what, Hotel. What is this Aldi Hotel? Where is it? A L D Y Mlacca. Is it Mlacca? At a is at the foot of Saint James Hill, at the end of mm. Jonker Street, Mlacca. Mm, okay? okay, okay. Uh, yeah. two very short confessions. One is by the staff. Ballroom mm. is haunted, and they nice. don't want to work late because those who work late to close the ballroom and everything would see mm. a phantom woman walking around, loitering around the place. Mm. Wow, huh. creepy. Uh, uh, um, a confessor who stayed there uh, saw mm. that when he was in the bathroom in the morning by the way in the daytime mm. saw a reflection of a woman standing behind him oh mm. he didn't reflection. the thing is he mm. didn't tell his partner he saw he saw uh, mm. he saw he followed rule number one what would do mm. never see brush teeth continue brushing teeth flew everywhere else right mm. then only when they check out and he says uh, darling by the way uh, you know our room is haunted <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's Aldi Hotel. So, but Aldi Hotel is closed right now, and the building mm. still stands there. So, uh, Abaxers like Alicia and all that, please lah, go in. Um, <laughs> Ooh, nice. Uh, take one for the team and let us know how is it. So, Kenny Polaris would like to share about the origin of the bride in red, mm. right? So, apparently, uh, the association of revenge is what came later. It was because it was a bride that died oh. and what became vengeful that red became the colour. So it I is see. because of wedding. 
Yeah. Okay. If okay. it was something else, then it would have been some other color that represents revenge, right? But mm. it just happened that it was a bride. So, uh huh. I see. Okay. Okay. Now okay. we know. Now it's level right. forty-one. We should get wow. on with the next uh confessions. <laughs> we got two very good and long confessions for you today. So mm. let's get on with the next one. But before we get on to the confession, I would like to mm. give you a short message. Thank you for listening to the Supernatural Confessions podcast. If you are enjoying the show and would like to support our efforts, you can help by giving us a 5-star review or by becoming a patron by signing up for a monthly membership fee that starts from as low as $5. Check out the perks at patreon.com slash supernatural confessions. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash supernatural confessions. Or if you feel like showing a simple gesture of appreciation, you can buy us a cup of coffee or two at buymeacoffee.com slash superconfess. And now, let's get back to the show. Okay, let's get back to the mm. show, Michelle. And the next confession, this one is from Penang. Oh. Old town, old city in... Uh, Malaysia. This one is titled Come Play With Us, confession by Anonymous. She's a woman, by the way. And mm. Jonathan, do us the honors, please. Eugene, I need to get this story off my chest. It's an experience I had during the June period almost a decade ago. But each year, around this time, I would recall this incident and the memories will haunt me. The trauma is so real that since then, I have not travelled or stayed in a hotel. The problem is my husband doesn't believe it. Or rather, he chose not to believe. And it's also easier for him to turn a blind eye because he was the one possessed and I was the one who saw and remembers everything. Damn unfair lah. So we stayed in a heritage hotel in Georgetown. It's a beautiful colonial style hotel with paintings and furniture that added to the vintage vibe of the place. Even though it's old, it didn't give off a haunted hotel vibe. The carpet was a bit musky and the wallpaper is dated, but that's to be expected. We checked into the hotel at midday and went to Makan. But by around evening time, my husband said he wasn't feeling well. Counting it off as probably exhaustion from the travelling and the heat, we went back early to rest. He took Panadol and slept. It's only our first day in Penang and if he gets sick now, the holiday will pretty much be over. He only had a short nap before waking up about two or three hours later. It was after sundown, about 8 p.m. He suddenly woke up, and for a while, he was a bit disoriented, kept asking, where am I? Why am I here? Oops, John dropped out. He was also... Oh, okay. Wait, John is back? John, are you there? John... Okay. Yeah, John, that was my young, that's why. Okay, we'll wait for John to come back. Because um, this one is a very good story and uh, you need to hear it in its proper form. So this break will not yeah. do. Okay, John, are you here? Yep. Okay, okay can't hear you. Uh, oh. can you? I think he's back. Yeah, he's back. Right? He, he oh, did I disappear? Hear him. When did I disappear? We have to, I have to reset. Okay. Can you uh, hear me now? Stay right there, ladies now? and gentlemen. I'm just going to refresh my browser and we will be right back with this. Who? Did I disappear? I didn't even know. Yeah.
Yeah, okay, I cannot see Eugene. Okay, we are back once again. On? John, I think we had a bit of technical issue with you. Are we on Can air? We do it are we live? Hey, what happened to him? Can't are we him live? Again. Can't hear you, John. What's going on? Okay, okay, okay. Can, uh, can. Wait, uh, let me just check your audio. You are... Uh, okay, can. Can hear you. Testing, testing. John? John? Can you hear me? Okay. I cannot see. I cannot see Eugene. Cannot see. Eh? I okay. cannot see Eugene. But I can only you, see you. But can you hear me? How strange. You can see Eugene, huh? Yes, I can see and hear him. Can, can oh, you no. hear what he's saying? No, I can't hear him at all. I oh, only dear. hear you. Yeah, we are in a world of two. Eh? Okay. So oh, dear. Testing. Can you hear okay. Me uh, you let him know. Uh, shall I? Shall I? Shall I log in again? I'm gonna. I'm gonna try to. I will try to. Eugene, reset can you again. hear me? Shall okay. I reboot? <laughs> okay, stable, stable. Stable already, yeah. Huh? Everything okay. Yeah, you never, never pipe pipe right, Eugene. Hey, the technical side is not my side; it's your side, you know. So I think your your part <laughs> need pipe <pie> pipe. <laughs> <laughs> but you are the museum, so you have all the barang. Yeah. Okay, you must pipe pipe on my behalf. Okay, everyone, okay. we are back. Can you hear us? Let us Here know in the comment are. section. Yes, back. Can hear, can hear. Vince, Yay! Vince thank back. you, Vince. Okay. All right. Okay, John. <laughs> let's let's start the confession from the top. Yeah. This okay. one is come play with us location. Yine. Eugene, I need to get this story off my chest. It's an experience I had during the June period almost a decade ago. But each year around this time, I will recall this incident and the memories will haunt me. The trauma is so real that since then, I have not travelled or stayed in a hotel. The problem is my husband doesn't believe it. Or rather, he chose not to believe. But it's also easier for him to turn a blind eye because he was the one possessed and I was the one who saw and remembers everything. It's damn unfair lah. So we stayed in a heritage hotel in Georgetown. It's a beautiful colonial style hotel with paintings and furniture that added to the vintage vibe of the place. Even though it's old, it didn't give off a haunted hotel vibe. The carpet was a bit musky and the wallpaper is dated, but that's to be expected. We checked into the hotel around midday, went out to Makan, and by around evening time, my husband said he wasn't feeling well. Counting it off as probably exhaustion from the travelling and the heat, we went back early to rest. He took Panadol and slept. It's only our first day in Penang, and if he gets sick now, the holiday will pretty much be over. He only had a short nap before waking up about two or three hours later. It was after sundown, around 8pm, he suddenly woke up. And for a while, he was quite disoriented. He kept asking, where am I? Why am I here? I felt his body and it was hot. 
His fever had just shot up. I didn't know what the temperature was, but you could tell it was very high by feeling around the forehead and neck area. He was also perspiring. I went to the toilet to wet a towel, and when I got back, he was sitting up, facing the window, and humming a tune. I don't know what song that was, but from the melody, it sounded Chinese. I even joked with my husband. I said, you so sick until your brain sought ready, ah? He didn't reply. I toweled his neck and back and then asked him to lie back down. He looked at me and asked me who I am. I even joked back that this one special service better pay me for this extra. He didn't reply. Just closed his eyes and dozed off. Throughout the night, he was murmuring in his sleep. I had shallow sleep all the way till sometime in the middle of the night and then exhaustion overtook my conscious mind and I also fell asleep. When I got up in the morning, my husband was already awake and in the toilet showering. When he got out of the shower, he was in high spirits. No fever, no lethargy, no recollection of anything from the previous night. He said he remembered feeling tired and sleepy. He came back to the hotel and slept till morning. I called him an ungrateful twat and was just glad that he's okay now and our holiday is not ruined. So second day, we went out for more sightseeing. No fever at all but complaints of mild headaches and an aching back. But by nightfall, the fever started again. This time, he said the migraine was unbearable. We skipped dinner and we headed back to the hotel. The behavioural change on the second night was drastic. He came into the room and he crashed straight away. Didn't even take off his shoes, just fell face first onto the bed. I took off his shoes and flipped him over in case he suffocated and died. And that's when he totally freaked me out. When I flipped him over, he started to giggle. Giggle, okay? Giggle in a girl's voice. And then there were voices coming out of him even though his lips weren't moving. I managed to catch a few words. Mari kita mayain. Let's play together in the Malay language. Those were the only words I understood. The rest sounded like a conversation between two people and then more giggles i kept thinking it's just my husband playing a prank on me it's not funny ah? i said you keep this up you're on your own i'm leaving the room my luggage which was open slammed shut that shocked the piss out of me i swear i think at the time i really did piss myself a little then i looked back at my husband but by this time his eyes were open and he was sitting up but one look at him and you can tell the lights were on but there was no one home. It's like looking at you but through you. I was done. I tried to run out of the room but the door wouldn't open. My husband was bouncing his way forward from the seated position towards the edge of the bed. Till today, I close my eyes, I can still recall him bouncing forward. Retelling you this story is giving me goosebumps. The only way, the only place left to go was the toilet. I ran in and shut the door behind me. I'm not a religious person, so I didn't have any mantra to recite or gods to call, but I did attend Sunday school when I was in kindergarten, so I called out to Jesus for help. I avoided looking in the mirror because I cannot bear to see the reflection of my eyes looking back at me. The memory of looking at my husband's glazed eyes was still fresh in my head. And then, knock, knock, knock on the toilet door. Go away, I screamed. Fuck off! And then the handle started rattling as he tried to force his way in. Sorry, sorry, just leave me alone! Knock, knock, knock again. I pressed my back against the door and held on to the lock to prevent it from opening. I just kept praying. And then the light went off. What else can I do? No phone, nothing. I just stood there in total darkness, braced against the door. Outside, I can hear giggling and banging. Things being moved about talking. I don't understand the language, but from my guesstimate, it sounded like three, maybe four people were talking. I stayed in the toilet, sat there in total darkness until it was totally quiet, and then waited even longer until I was very, very, very sure that there was no sound for another hour or two. I waited until I saw a little bit of light from under the door. Opening the door was the scariest part. 
I braced myself to slam the door shut with my body weight if anything pops out within line of sight. I waited a bit, opened the gap slightly, waited a bit more, opened the gap slightly more until I felt really safe. Then I stepped out of the toilet. It was already morning and the light was coming through from the parted curtains and my husband was in bed snoring. I was very confused at this point. Everything looked normal. I half expected the place to be turned upside down from all that noise the previous night. I left my husband there to sleep and ran downstairs to the front counter. There, I just broke down and cried. The manager came and other female staff were present. I was shivering and crying uncontrollably. When I could speak, I told them what happened. According to the night shift staff who were still on duty, there was no complaint of noise from the adjoining room or any guest seen on CCTV entering my room. Two of the staff offered to accompany back to the room. I stayed outside with one of the staff. The other one went in to wake my husband. When he woke up, it was as if nothing had happened. He was surprised to see the hotel staff in the room and me standing outside, probably looking like a mad woman. He looked genuinely confused. After the staff had ascertained that everything was safe and sound, they left. My husband had zero recollection. Once again, in the morning, no fever and he was feeling fine. We had one more night stay, but there was no way I was going to stand another night. I broke down again, packed my bags quickly and insisted we book a flight home. I didn't feel safe. Poor husband, confused as hell, just went along with what I wanted. We flew back to Singapore and everything was normal. The husband felt fine, the fever was gone, and so were the aches and headaches. Hmm. Wow, so trauma, yeah. Trauma, trauma, trauma. Right. Before we get to the dissection, I just want to quickly read out the comments because it was quite way up there. Yeah, I, I kept seeing everything. <laughs> 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 wow. Uh, Elia Mona Lisa says, uh, there's a new name, by the way, so I want to read her, her comment because ah. this is the first time she's texting. One time during business trip before pandemic, I stayed in a hotel in Bogor. Where's Bogor? Can Bogor. He, I can hear okay. a Shalawat recording being played all night from the next door. Mm. Uh, 84k white turning black hair says before the show starts do you guys pray pray I did I'm surrounded <laughs> by protection Chon Chen Achilles uh, Aries and Joe Keck is all saying uh, this one tonight one very strong uh, we need to do this together everybody take out your ding dong and tete to help us <laughs> I do agree with that's the the, the, the solution so ladies mm. and gentlemen when you're listening to yeah. us tonight uh, <laughs> please help us get a smooth uh, connection by <laughs> picking up your top or pulling down your pants. Ding dongs out. Yeah. How, how do you know that Eugene and I are not already ding dongs out? Mm. Uh, uh, oh. <laughs> Abud okay. is saying he has dropped his already. Thanks. Thanks, Abud. Yeah. <laughs> Alexandra, Brina as well. John and Eugene never pray before start live, right? To be mm -hmm. very honest, Alexandra, usually every week I will I would pray before starting. Today, mm. we were a bit of last minute and, you know, trying to get things set up. I did not pray today. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. Wow. This, 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 this is a very traumatic story. Okay. I, I, I really cannot imagine being in that bathroom all through the night in the dark, mm. hearing all sorts of things going on outside. Wow. Okay. So, Litya, how, how like that? How? What's going on? I... I possession? find it very hard to explain like mm -hmm. with a rational or logical <laughs> reason. Um, but if we, I, I think if we do go like the spiritual or supernatural route, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't be able to say la, whether it's something that they might have... Uh, bumped into while mm. like going around Georgetown or Padang or if it's mm. something that's uh, living in the hotel because mm. I've I've not been to Penang but I think Georgetown is a very very, very old place old. Yeah. very historical yeah, yeah and definitely uh, was already there la, before mm. uh, the British uh, set up base so mm. you never really know who is still living there <laughs> or if they have like Cause you know sometimes from what I heard lah in all the mm. stories is that sometimes spirits they can, you know like absorb energy over time and become mm. more powerful. So 
you never know lah. Maybe it's one of those more powerful uh, families that have been there for some time. That's why the husband, you know, took on the different voices mm. and different forms of various people. Or it might oh. be just this one person. I mean, not really a person, but this one entity lah. But the one entity can sort of shape shift a little bit. You never know. <laughs> This is interesting because uh, I mean the title is, is a bit of a hint, right? You know, and, and the, the the phrase that she heard, right? You know, the phrase that she caught is "come play with us," mm. right? So that there, there are the sense that there's multiple entities. You know, I love the idea that it's a family. Your that and his so family or ghosts, you know. You... No, can you imagine? <laughs> she's inside, right? You hear one child, then one child speaking to someone. Then by the time she's in the toilet, uh, there's a full family argument going on outside, and she's like, "What the hell?" What's so opera is this happening in my husband's mouth mm. you know so wow i don't know yeah i'm very fascinated to know what the background to this could have been mm. right you know earlier we had the story of the the, the frustrated bride now we have the the, the 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 board family who wants to play games <laughs> you know <laughs> i don't know or maybe it was like a bunch of children which is not at all mm. unusual huh? very very common we even talked about the children in the last hotel episode right and and all the you know all the gina gina a very common haunting you know uh and it could be right because every time you hear the the word play in a ghost story that's usually right because i guess it gets boring like if you are dead so young nobody plays with you because nobody can see you you know so i don't know but on the other hand also we also know that child spirits uh could also be something in disguise mm. so it could be something much more malevolent uh in this case it didn't get too bad lah Right, it didn't get too mm. bad, you know, and also it was it was kind of periodic, right? Which is quite kind of interesting. The timing is revealing, but I have a suspicion it's just the husband did not want to come on this trip, wanted to go back to Singapore. <laughs> what other way can I do this? First night, I'm just gonna act, head, act headache, act headache, uh, you know. <laughs> then my wife still doesn't seem to trust that I'm sick, and then like already want to blame me for spoiling the trip on the very first headache. So I'm like, I need to escalate. I need to escalate. And he just kept going, mm. kept going. And he won. He cut short the trip. Mm. So, mm. so yeah. Somebody, that... somebody is asking a question. Mm. How, come, how come it's so easy for the guy to get possessed? I heard mm. from some of my spiritual friends mm. that spirits don't possess malevolent ones. Except malevolent ones. Except malevolent ones. It, 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 I think it's a function of both sides, lah, right? You know, to, to get possessed, you have to be uh, the, the susceptible person in the room. And you also have to encounter a spirit that has enough will to do so, right? Mm. You know, yeah, your average wandering mm. thing, may, you know, may not have the power to do that. But if they want to, they will. Especially if you're in their territory, you mm. know, you are really sort of the... Uh, um, a sitting duck lah mm. for possessions right yeah so and then of course if it's a family then uh, you can uh, you know yeah. so yeah but thank you thank you I, for the donation I've, I've and a, question I've got an answer mm. for Achilles mm. series yeah what's your version okay uh, and I say this because in my book that I wrote about uh, with my experience um, the person which you can buy in the merch <laughs> supernaturalconfessions.com my book is going mm. for $24.40 you can buy it now first print is running very 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 low uh, second print and new prints coming out uh, end of this year but it's no longer that original cover original artwork anyway so, mm. so with regards to possession uh, Achilles is right that it is not easy like John you me Li, uh, mm. Li Hui and all that it, we, it's, uh. it's, for us to get <laughs> for us to you get, possess are you okay <laughs> for space to possess us it's not easy because our young chi our guardian our and it is not so easy to just walk into your house even yeah. okay think of it from a human point angle huh? you're mm. not going to walk into your neighbor's house even if the door is open you get me there mm. is that that layer of uh, protection that's a door or a gate, even if it's not locked. But right. in the case of some people, they just at the right place, right time, they are very susceptible to anything possessing them, malicious, wandering spirit, or even the divine. And in the case yeah. of Mel, it mm. was 1st May, was it 5th May? 5th May 2012, where mm. the stars were aligned and she was a Wi-Fi with no password. And there are, oh, there are people like that who have mediumship ability and things just pop into them. Mm. So mm. in this case, uh, what it seems to me, uh, again, from prior knowledge that I have, 
the husband mm. had a moment where he was a Wi-Fi with no password, and on the first mm. day, there was a Chinese spirit humming a Chinese song in his body. Mm. On the mm. second day, Malay spirits, family of them. So, uh, to answer again Eri's question, it could just be him at the right place, right time. Mm. Oh, so you're thinking that these were different things possessing him on the different nights? I, I am on. I'm on the, the John side this time. There's not one. There's multiple. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, I when mean, you come when you come to my side, my side shift. <laughs> Actually, I'm wondering if it could also uh. be possible that. Uh, so, uh, I think one of the beliefs that some mm. spiritual people have uh, is like reincarnation and how your soul basically, uh, gets like reincarnated into different mm. forms. So it might be that, I, I don't know, lah, but just speculating, maybe the mm. husband, um, he, he has some sort of like past connection to mm. the place mm. or the uh, the people who were there before. Lah. That's why when Ooh. he just so happened to be there, uh, he um, they, they, they sense this like connection with him. Lah, and so it was easy wow. for them to like step into his form in a sense that's uh, a I, really interesting idea yeah, yeah i think it, some it, people also uh, someone suggested in the chat uh, sorry i yeah. cannot find a comment mm. but uh they said maybe the husband uh abun the husband accidentally stepped on something somewhere somehow that mm. might also be possible or, yeah like that, something to trigger that sort of connection with um mm. the rest of the entities around him mm. I mean, that definitely to to uh, accidentally bring something home or accidentally, you know, um, offend something and then be followed home is definitely quite likely. Mm. Uh, but I'm very intrigued by 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 this suggestion that you know that that, that it, you're haunted because you are the key. You have you know you used to be her husband. Now you come back and she's been waiting for you all this while. You know? Who knows? Yeah, that's or fascinating. He, in one of his um previous reincarnations he hmm. joined a game with a malay family and never finished that's why they are like hey 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 come Wait, back and play with one. us <laughs> you He's... took the dice away <laughs> he played <laughs> he the game monopoly play. halfway yeah. through and then like he go and take was... everybody's money right and then he suddenly no, like okay he was, bye he was the banker then he ran he away got tummy <laughs> dead, like, he never finished the game <laughs> 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 i'm not sure all possible, uh, all entirely possible. No, okay. Mm. So Eugene, you were talking about the first night sang Chinese song, mm. second day speak Malay, right? Yeah. Don't forget, ah, uh, this is Pranakan Town. Oh, that's true. <laughs> Georgetown, ah, uh, yeah. is Pranakan Town. So it it might be the same family, a Pranakan family. Ah. Uh, you know. Oh. Hmm. Very interesting. I'm so. I I want to ask this person many questions. <laughs> RYWL seems to know where the hotel is. Uh, he oh. or she has said that she has stayed in a hotel similar to this description, where it's a colonial hotel in Georgetown, and they have mm. uh, old furnitures and portraits on the wall. Mm. Yeah, and when she stayed there uh, with her with her mom, uh, uh, uh you know, um, the deceased mom, uh, the light bulb uh. blew above her. No, 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 no. Wait, okay. No, what, 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 uh, what, what he's saying is, uh, when he, when he and the mom discussed the photos mm. and the mom oh. said, I think those people are dead. That means they were talking about the people in the photo. I see, I see. The light bulb blue. Ah. Ah, wow. uh, it's like, oh, uh, you're talking about us, huh? Uh, you know? Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> I think Vince no, is more correct. No, la. no, my Vince, mom wasn't dead. Okay, I'm sorry. I'll write up. Yeah, yeah <laughs> that's correct. Is is the people in the photo are dead? Mm. But mm. Vince Lee's theory is very good. Must be the wife too much shopping, so the husband <laughs> needed to cut short his trip. Yeah. yeah uh, Andy Andy SKW says I stayed in PJ Hilton for a business trip and heard two kids running and laughing loudly at 1:30 a.m. Mm. Later, I found out the hotel is famous for being dirty. Mm. PJ Hilton. Wow. We should have a new system, right? Where we just go like, is it three ghosts, four ghosts, or five ghosts hotel? <laughs> Popular with supernatural Scary. conventions. Five ghosts hotel. Four and a half ghosts. Yeah. Wow, shook, then yeah. you see these hotels with the SC logo there, right? you can go there and like, uh, uh, sir, I would like a downgrade. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. That's wow. such a good idea. Hey. If you guys are keen mm. on us rating hotels, please let us know. <laughs> please let us know. Okay, okay. It's eleven ten right now. Um, shall we find out a bit more about Licha before we get into the yeah, final question? Yeah. So okay, now is the bit where you uh, you can throw all your exciting questions about her. Okay, but I want to know first of all 
how did you get interested in the supernatural and gradually find your way to this strange community? <laughs> tell us, tell us. I think I've been interested in uh, spooky stories since... Mm. When I since I was young, so mm. in primary school I started reading of I, I started reading like True Singapore Ghost Stories, Mister Midnight, and all these like very common, uh, books for kids. Mm. And uh, when I learned how to use a computer, then I would go and Google like ghost stories in Singapore, spooky places, <laughs> and it was very exciting to me because I think it showed a a side of Singapore that I wouldn't uh have really known um. Mm just like by studying in school or by like reading social studies textbooks. So mm. you find a you find a lot of uh old places, past places, um locations that may no longer be there anymore, such as the cemeteries at Orchard Road or the uh -huh. KK Hospital uh Kampong Java Pond la, where allegedly mm. there's like a mass grief, right? Yeah. So I think that was very interesting and it got me um so it got me uh, into the SE community over time. Uh. Yeah, and also, <laughs> just full disclosure, huh? like when I first started listening to the podcast, uh, I heard Tim O's voice and I was like, wow, very sexy, very manly, <laughs> very attractive. I continue listening. Yeah. Mm. I'll let him know. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, but he's a DJ, la, so he probably already knows, right? <laughs> Never mind. It doesn't hurt to hear again, yeah. right? <laughs> so, okay, I'm very interested in this. So, okay, but in your real, in your life, do you have supernatural experiences yourself? Are you sensitive in any way or maybe your family? No, not really. Um, mm. I don't think my family is particularly like sensitive or mm. aware of mm. other energies around us. Um. I have heard like some stories, but it's normally like uh secondhand accounts or like right. hearsay and urban legends. So so okay, so if, if you are not uh in yourself, right, innately drawn to the mm. supernatural or they are not drawn to you, and your interest actually began so early as a child, you know, then I am super fascinated because I think I mean, this is what I get from you, right? That you are seeing the supernatural as a way to understand the culture and the mm. country that you're in, right? Yeah, you know? definitely. And, and that's a, that's really one. I've always believed that. I've always believed that. Um, um, I mean, Eugene, you know this, right? You know, working on the Walk with Hantu tour, mm. you know, learning about a place and its history is best done through ghost stories, mm. Mm. right? Because mm -hmm. every ghost story is about the history of a place is about the things that were once here now gone the people who were once here now gone mm. right and our relationship with them you know so so the when you study history it's always about ghosts you know so i think it's so amazing that lisa discovered this early mm. right and as a child you know i i don't even I was not so profound as a child. Or I just liked them because there was gore yeah. <laughs> and they were scary. You know, I was not being so cheap about it. Mm. But over the years, I have also come to see the supernatural as exactly mm -hmm. what Litya says. You know, it's the best way to understand a nation. You know, and that's why dark tourism is so interesting nowadays, mm. right? Because, you know, the, 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 the things that the tourist boards of every country wants you to see are not genuine, are very seldom the truth about the nation. Mm. But you go and dig for the stories, the things that they are afraid of, you know. Uh, then you start to understand the people, you know. Wow. Okay. Oh, yes. okay. Are you a dark tourist yourself, Nitya? Mm. Or, or, eh, I heard you are a, a, a backser, is it? Uh, no, not really. Uh, I enjoy, <laughs> I enjoy looking at other people's urbex experience. Ah. But, uh, Have you I been yourself? Personally, yeah, I don't personally seek out those places. Um. <laughs> I guess dark tourism, I mm. have been to some places where uh, atrocities have happened before. Mm. And even though like personally, I may not be able to like maybe see um, other mm. things around me. Mm. Uh, I, I think most people, when they go to these places, you can feel a very heavy energy mm. and it sort of like drains your drains your energy over time. La. So yeah. um, mm. some examples would be uh, Auschwitz in Poland mm. and also uh, the killing fields in Cambodia. Mm. So I think these places, yeah. because you know that they have a very, very tragic past and a mm. lot of people have lost their lives. You, I, I think that really casts like mm. a gloom and sadness over you. And mm. um, it, it just takes away at your, at your like 
to some extent your sense of self a little bit lah. Because sometimes mm. when I walk out of these places, I do feel very, very drained. Yeah, but um, definitely my experience may not be uh, what everybody uh, goes through lah, in these places because I'm aware that some people in the community, they can really, um, yeah, they're a lot more in, attuned in to tune, the yeah, environment yeah. around us that we cannot mm. physically see and mm. feel. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so there's lots of questions coming in. Okay, yeah, I saw yeah. I saw one very important question okay, which I also want to ask you, which is, uh, so someone was asking, I can't remember who, uh, which is the most scary confession that you have read? Mm, that's a good one. <laughs> a very good one. Hmm. The most scary one. Uh, uh, that stayed with you. Yeah. That stayed with you. Hmm. Okay. okay, maybe not the most scary one, but mm. I think a very memorable one is um the one I read about a nurse's experience. So I think um the story was about how she like heard or saw some activities outside a patient's window. And then uh she wanted to protect the patient, right? So she mm. just threw open the curtains and yelled like, hey, stop disturbing my patient. She wants to rest and then just close the curtains. And then the the thing outside stopped misbehaving. Like. So I thought that was really, really mm. very courageous. Mm. And it it really shows like nurses are super, super awesome people. Yeah. And yeah. we really <laughs> owe them a lot. Like. Yeah. Well, Licha, some of the... Because from what you're telling us, some of our um, audience are guessing that you're not from Singapore. Uh, something you're Malaysia. One even say you're from China. Where are you from? My family is from China, so my parents moved here when I was three years old. Mm. Uh, mm. So even though I grew up in Singapore, right, uh, I, I think we are maybe not so plugged into the local stories, folklore and traditions as uh, some of the listeners here are. La. Yeah, and uh, because I see people like in the, for example, in the Must Be The Hantu group, people will share stories about like the old Kampong times yeah. mm. or um, yeah, experiences that they've heard from relatives or uh, I think some of the more interesting ones was like uh, talking about Topayo in the past la, like one of the blocks very creepy then they see people crossing the road mm. uh, so actually mm. I live in Topayo and it's not something Ooh. that we that we like as in my family would know la, because we never live here for like generations yeah. so I think that's mm. something which is very interesting to me mm. and yeah, since you talk actually, about dark true. tourism and walk with Hantu well, mm. uh, if you guys are interested, Walk With Hantu is happening every Thursday and Saturday, 7.30 to 10.30. Next week, we have one as well. So if you're curious about what's this Walk With Hantu thing and duck tourism, well, well, do join us for this tour. Get in touch with me at 9459 More information on our website, supernaturalconfessions.com. Yeah, it's very true, you know, because nowadays, um, it's like, and it's something we bring up during our tour as well, right? Which is, you know, as a modern Singaporean, you can't go back to the kampong days, mm. you know, you can't live that life again. But every time you hear a kampong ghost story, you're there, yeah. you're back there, you know, you, every time a pochong appears, it's a kampong, mm. it's a kampong day. Man. <laughs> okay, one last question from Anna Wong. Uh, Licha, if you're okay with sharing this, what is your day job? Uh, she's curious. Mm. <laughs> I am working in the civil service. Silver oh. service? Hey, can book, oh. the, can book the civil service, uh, Shelley, in Chinese. <laughs> Shelley, can book Shelley, book Shelley. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I heard that's also one of the potentially creepy places. Come to the mm. walk with Changi and we'll let you know more about that. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> okay. Anyway, it's one twenty right now. We'd like to know more about Li Chia, but you know what? You can always find us or find her on our Facebook group, private group. That's uh, facebook.com. Uh, go and search on a group. Must be the Hantu because we all know it must be the Hantu. Uh, but before we go uh, to our final, conf <laughs> final confession for tonight, which is a long one, read by all mm. three of us, yeah. I have a short message for you. Supernatural Confessions was created as a safe space for people to share their paranormal encounters. If you or someone you know has a strange encounter to share, we want to hear about it. You can type it to us, send us a voice memo, or even meet me for a face-to-face -face interview. Visit supernaturalconfessions.com for more info. This final confession for tonight is called Come Play With Us. Oh, no, it's not Come Play With Us. Ah, okay. Okay. 
This is called Get Out. Location, we move over to Genting. Confession by ADT. My friends and I wanted a quick getaway, so we decided to drive up to Genting for a three-day, two-night stay. I booked the hotel on Agoda and found two rooms for 300 ringgit. For three days and two nights? Two rooms? It was a steal. It had 7.3 stars. So okay lah, it can't be that bad. The two girls, me and another friend, let's call her Fergie, would share one room. And a guy, let's call him William, will take the other room. It was relatively easy to navigate our way to the hotel. William was a seasoned driver. Fergie and I took turns to ride shotgun as navigators. We left Singapore at 5am to beat the Causeway Jam, had breakfast along one of the pit stops, and by the time we arrived at the hotel, it was about lunchtime. We made good time, and so far, everything was going as planned. There was a bit of confusion during the check-in because we realised that I had booked the service apartment and not the hotel. So we had to move our luggages back in the car and drive to the other building. The apartment block was facing a famous building with a terrible reputation for haunting even though the tenants vehemently denies it. I soon found the reason why the rooms I booked were so cheap. It's because it's a single apartment homestay unit with two bedrooms. The place looked decent, and as long as the toilets were clean and functioning, I was okay with it. After putting down our stuff, we went out for the day, and by the time we came back, it was almost midnight. Even though we followed the GPS, this time, we cannot find the way back to the hotel. We drove around in circles, making U-turns, passing by the Shell gas station multiple times. But for some reason, we just cannot find a road to take that lead up to our hotel. We pulled over by the side of the road and just waited. All of us were tired and a bit annoyed. Fergie thinks I'm a lousy navigator, which pisses me off. And when she couldn't find a place, I had a good time gloating at her which pissed her off. William was taking our instructions and driving in circles, so he was pissed off as well. Tension was high. Somewhere at this point, a strong, foul stench entered our car. My first thought was that someone farted. And I said out loud, Hey, Fergie, you farted ah? William straight away shot me a look and said, Hey, don't say already. Fergie didn't respond. She looked straight ahead, didn't flinch. We waited a while longer and the smell intensified. I asked William to check the ventilation function and to close it if it's open. Well, I guess we probably stopped by a place with a pile of manure nearby, I thought. William snapped this time. It can shut up already or not? Like I said, tension was high. I just kept quiet and looked out the window. From out of nowhere, a black dog leapt up to my window right in my face and started growling. I screamed. William and Fergie turned to look at me. What the fuck? Dogs, I yelled back. Where? I turned to look at the window again, but there was nothing there. I was sure as hell a dog pounced up just now. Okay, okay, everyone, just be calm, Fergie said, and played a Buddhist mantra from her phone. After a while, we saw a beam of light behind us. A car drove past us and turned into a lane that we hadn't noticed before. We were all surprised. Driving by so many rounds, none of us saw that road. But now that the car has gone up, the road became obvious again. William followed the car and drove up the hill in silence. We eventually found the hotel, parked the car and went up to the room. Amongst the three of us, Fergie is a sensitive meaning she can sense entities around. Once we were safely back in our rooms, she told me that there were lots of ghosts crowding around the car when we had stopped, and that's why there was the smell. And when you smell such things at night, you never ever acknowledge them. Because once the ghosts know you can sense them, they will follow you. William turned out to be more chicken shit than me, and asked if we could all sleep in the same room. Fergie wasn't comfortable with squeezing, so she offered to let William share the room with me while she slept alone in William's room. We didn't sleep right away. William and I, still feeling the adrenaline rush from the strange incident, stayed up to chat and laugh about what we had encountered. 
At 3 a.m. exactly, I know that because William has an old Casio watch that beeps every hour. There were scratching sounds on our room door and the sound of a dog whimpering. Mind you, it's just right outside our bedroom door. Not outside the window, it's not anywhere, it's right at our door. Fuck lah, how is this possible? Oh my god, I'm going to die on the spot. I don't know what to do. I was about to get up to open the door to check, but William helped me back. Don't bloody open the door, it's not a dog! So we stayed in our beds, letting the scratching and whimpering go on. Then the whimpering turned to loud angry barks and the scratches got more furious. From above us, it sounded like furniture was being dragged across the floor in the unit above. We recorded a video of us, the door and the noise and posted it in the group chat that Fergie, William and I shared. Fergie didn't see the message, so I guess she must have slept through the noise. William and I looked at each other and said, let's go to sleep. We left the room light on and did our best to ignore the noise. Somewhere along the way, I fell asleep. William didn't sleep a wink. Fergie woke up before me. We went to check the door, but the door had zero scratches. Fergie didn't hear any noise either. And the strange thing is, even the video we had taken and posted in the group chat had no barking sound and no scratching noises. Just the humming of the aircon and our voices saying, can you hear that? Can you hear that? But Fergie's experience was a little different. There was a woman crying and laughing in her attached toilet. She scolded the spirit, put on her earphones and went to sleep. Midway through the night, the aircon got really cold. Fergie reached for the aircon remote control by her bedside but couldn't find it. She got up to search for it and eventually found it in the toilet wash basin. I tried to contact the owner of the apartment but since I don't have the direct number, I can only leave an email and wait for a reply. Now that it's morning again, we were quite brave and the previous night's accidents uh, events didn't seem as scary. So same thing, we went out to shop, play and makan and all the horror was forgotten until we were driving back again it was close to midnight but by this time all three of us were looking out for the hidden road that we had missed yesterday this time thankfully we did find it but something else happened our apartment block has a convenience store downstairs he came out Along the drive up, there's a signage that says "Hey Kmart" in 500 meters. We drove past it four times. Then I had to say out loud, "Hey, are we driving in circles again?" Both Fergie and William lamented at the same time. Walau eh, diam lah. Then William continued, "I know I can be stupid, but this is very obvious. I know there's something wrong already. Nothing we can do now. Just keep going. Don't stop. They want us to stop." Fergie said. Huh? Who wants us to stop? Diam lah, ayo, stop asking already. Fergie yelled at me. This time, Fergie didn't just play the Buddhist mantra. She called her husband, who was residing in Singapore, and gave him instructions and some steps he should take with the altar at home. What Fergie was doing was invoking her God's help directly. I heard something about a whip, lighting of incense, and burning of specific talismans. The road seemed never-ending, just straight and endless. But this time, it was different. One of the hotels in the vicinity loomed into view, greasy, sinister, with an eerie glow. We continued driving round the bend towards our building. We parked the car and headed up to the sixth floor. Our unit is 606. When the lift door opened, I had the shock of my life. The lights in the corridor had gone out. It was almost pitch black, except for some light coming out from under the doors of the unit that were occupied. Fergie took charge and walked ahead using her handphone torch. Fergie's demeanor was aggressive. William was trying his best to maintain composure. I was biting onto my jacket so I don't end up saying stupid things. When we got to the room, the door couldn't open. I, and I don't mean that the security card couldn't work. I sell digital locks for a living, so I know very well how they work. When we tapped our card, the green light came on and the sound of the bolt drawing back, but the door just couldn't be opened. 
Fergie tried, William tried, I tried. The handle could turn, but the door just cannot open. Fergie let loose a string of expertise. She called her husband again and gave him some more instructions, this time to call upon a different deity. After she put down the phone, she started yelling at the door in Hokkien, Don't make me angry. I don't want to banish you, so don't force me. The door opened by itself by half a foot. She pushed the door open and proceeded to pack her bags. Quick, we don't have much time. She'll be back soon. Seeing her in such a frenzied state, we didn't question anything. We just followed. A metal fixture fell close to Fergie, narrowly missing her. Ah, fuck, 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 Fergie muttered. She's coming back. We all dashed out of the place down the dark corridor. No handphone lights this time because our hands were all full and went straight to the elevator. Behind us, we can hear banging of cupboard doors sound coming from the unit behind. When the lift arrived, we all bundled into the lift and got the hell out of the apartment. We drove over to another hotel and stayed the night. The next hotel also one kind lah. But I don't know if the hotel room was haunted or if something followed us, but it was nothing as sinister and obvious as the first apartment. Just noises and shadows. After what we had gone through, these new spirits got a scolding from all of us. After that, the whole night was peaceful. Ooh. Oh, ah, ah, oh, this one. Yikes. In your wow. face haunting, right, guys? In what your a face. Saga. What a saga. Ah. <laughs> Okay. Okay. I, I have a theory, but I don't want to share mine yet. Okay. Ah. <laughs> I want to I want to hear from Li Chia first. Hi. Mm. <laughs> how like that? It's probably what? uh one of the fans of the black eyed peas, but from the other world. <laughs> Ooh, a Fergie fan, a Fergie fan. Yes, Fergie fan. <laughs> Will I am fan. <laughs> you know, they just try to like get their attention. Like, it's like how you see your favorite celebrities in the concert, right? Mm. And you like go and wave the banner and then like wave the light sticks and stuff. La. But <laughs> you know, because they belong to another realm, right? Nah. Maybe their way of showing affection is different. That's why it freaked <laughs> everybody out. <laughs> yeah, then I maybe Fergie like misunderstood the situation right and then she's like oh calling her husband and going like hey you want ask the god to help us out and then the god is like the bouncer right then the bouncer is like hey what are you trying to do man like hands off the celebrities you know <laughs> well, the small problem is that the real names is not fergie and william i guess the confessor is a big fan yeah. of the like ips <laughs> <laughs> oh. wow i mean Okay, I'm, a lot of people were commenting about the the car, right? Mm. Getting lost mm. and whether you know, uh, is it the ghost cover eyes or ghost cover the whole car, mm. <laughs> you know, and all these things, right? I mean, that's such a fascinating phenomenon. Mm. Happens a lot. Happens a lot. What 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 do you guys think is behind that? So in the second confession, we felt that mm. it could be the the husband collecting spirits, not in a hotel, outside a hotel. Mm. And then Correct. bringing it back to the hotel, perhaps. This yeah. one sounds like the spirit was from the hotel following them throughout. Mm. Mm. And I see. obviously, it's very powerful. So, mm. my I'm leaning towards the entity of this place being quite demonic in nature. Could it be a gin? Because oh, <laughs> there was the black dog at the car. Ah, right? oh. So I think there's a, a belief where the black dog, I think, is a manifestation of like something. Mm. Mm. I'm not sure what it is, but um, I've heard about that. Mm. Jins and black dogs, Eugene? Uh, got connection, right? Got or connection. Not? Um, mm. Because if it's a gin and knowing that Malays are... Uh, um, you know they they do not have an affinity with dogs and mm. uh, you know they, they they tend to avoid dogs thinking that dog slivers mm. are um, yeah. dirty so if i'm mm. a gene and i'm trying to manifest myself into a, a, a something repulsive something repulsive i would yeah i would turn into a black dog mm, with a lot of sliver mm. <laughs> a drooling but black what, dog what was scary for me was when mm. they heard the scratching sound of the dog whimpering outside yes. the bedroom door. Because don't forget, this is not a hotel room. It's a mm. service apartment or homestay. And if mm -hmm. someone's scratching on your bedroom door, which means mm. it's already in your house. 
Correct. Mm. Correct. But the other part of my mind also is thinking this entity didn't need to knock on your door to go in. It could just go in at any time because the whole place belongs to them. It literally was mm. following you guys around. So I think if you wanted to harm just you, wanted, it could have uh, harmed you already. Correct. If you want to drop... You just them, wanted to torment them. Correct. Yeah. Mm. Make them right. feel afraid and feed yeah. off the fear. Correct. That correct. feeling. Feed off the fear. And it's interesting... Richard, you're right. I think yeah. it could even mm. be a case where I don't want to chase you away. I want to feed off your mm. fear. The fear yeah. is what nourishes me. So mm. uh, the more frightened you are, the more powerful I get. And I guess, mm. you know, the, the spirit... Have 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 done it to a point where they were really really very disturbed, and mm. I'm quite curious. Six oh six. Do you think that might be any connection, or is that just totally coincidental? To the number six. Co- to me, coincidental because mm. this all sounds much more intentional and serious. It's not a. It's not just because they got number. I must go there and haunt <laughs> them. <Yeah. laughs> you know, I think yeah. But in, while this dog dog scratching was happening right next door. Mm. Is the la- is the crying and laughing in the toy in the toilet, mm. right? And then after that, still your remote control make your aircon co. Mm. So clearly, it is kind of mischief, but taken to an almost malevolent bullying kind mm. of level. If he right? wanted so, to and, harm you, he could. That's what. It, of that's course, what I feel. totally, mm. totally. Just sit there and strangle you already, right? But mm. instead, I hide in the toilet and and cry, cry, cry. Then when you fall asleep wearing the the earpods and ignore me, I make you co. Mm. So it is to me. It's very it's very bullying mm. right and when you're bullying it's because you want to feed on the fear Achilles Aries says uh, and thank mm. you for your donation as well for the super chat uh, Achilles says yeah it seems demonic since there seems to be a group of entities led by a certain she that Fergie mm. alluded to so uh, yes. what he's trying to say and I do agree with Achilles in this case it's multiple entities in one place led by mm. a dominant jinn or spirit or entity in this case. Mm. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, they're organized, right? They're yeah. organized. They got and entities. I think, yeah, one of the, I think the confessor also said that uh, Fergie, I think, said mm. that there's like a group of ghosts around the car, right? Oh, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. So she's a bit more sensitive. So it's like the, like the main like the main diva la, like Beyonce then her squad is like around the <laughs> car la. wow this this story full of pop stars <laughs> wow, yeah, pop culture references alright anyway I, okay, would, I would love but, sorry uh, John you, need, uh, you, you can wrap up the, the discussion I, for this one I got this I got so so my theory is mm. this okay so so yes multiple spirits totally agreed uh, uh, probably a uh, uh, Beyonce in the hotel room leading her ghost but I'm wondering if it's not two different camps because there's something plaguing them in the hotel, mm. right? That is uh, possibly well known, mm. right? But there's also some other supernatural force that's trying to tell them don't go back to oh, the hotel. I didn't see that way. I'm but covering your eyes. I'm hiding the road from you. Every night I do, you stubbornly still want to go back, mm. right? Even Fergie said they want us to stop, mm. not mm. to harm you, but to stop so you don't go back. Mm. And Gunna from that evil Beyonce, right? So the so the dog and those spirits surrounding the car may have been trying to warn them. You might be right. You might be right. Mm. That's true. Because the intention is different, right? If I want to haunt you in my hotel room, then I rush you back to the hotel room. I can haunt you some more. Okay, so two 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 streams of uh two two mm. two two school of thoughts here. One is I don't want you to come back. This is my place. F off. I will prevent you from coming back. The other is, I feed off your fear and then there's another group of entities that's trying to prevent this mm-hmm. humans. And watch out for this place. Yeah. Don't go back. Don't go back. You will die. And what, you know? What's interesting is the final hotel that they went to in Genting is also haunted. What do you guys think? <laughs> Is that something that followed them across or a brand new <laughs> set of entity? I think it's just based on tonight's stories, what are the chances it's haunted? Very high, right? <laughs> so, but the, the fun the thing... The whole from... Malay Peninsula is like that. 
<laughs> but for me, I love the fact that please do not be the second haunting. You don't stand a chance. Okay, it's yeah. like after surviving this horror, I'm like, no time for your shit. Okay, yeah shut la. up. What shadow la? No, I just hello. <laughs> so basic. Nah, kucing korak, kucing korak is on the go. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's I like love someone, that. Yeah, someone said in the comments, uh, is hantu like high school jobs? So it's something like you transfer schools lah. Like the first school was very rabat, so you go to the second school already. Then you're like, yeah, these people throw it at me, nothing one. <laughs> you know, I love Li Jia's accent. She's so Singaporean already. I can't even tell the Chinese accent from <laughs> from her. You know, like, uh, she's she's super local. Uh, like once someone said in the comment section, really claim her as ours. She's Singaporean already. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, absolutely. Uh, I, w- I would love to carry on this conversation. Uh, Lee Chia, we'd love to have you back as well. And if you yeah. could, and you're still in Singapore, obviously we claim you. So uh, for the live live show during the finale, please do come down uh, and mm. uh, perhaps be possibly, you know, uh, as our guest again. Um, but tonight, mm. we actually have another featured confession on our YouTube channel. This one is Uncle Patrick. And Uncle Patrick is going to tell you stories mm. from the 60s. And why I love this so much is Uncle Patrick is such an interesting storyteller. And you just you guys just got to watch it, okay? It's not going to be your usual kind of confession because this is from the 60s. So understand that in the 60s, all the way to the 90s, their, their confessions, their encounters, is very much different from the true Singapore ghost story era that comes mm. after the, the 90s. So have a listen mm. to that one. That's Uncle Patrick happening right now actually 11.40. We are oh, late by two okay. minutes. So <laughs> I suppose we have to end our say goodbye so that everyone can just pop over to listen to featured confession. Any last mm. words, Lisha? Uh, thanks for having me on the show. And yeah, if there's a live live show again this year, looking forward to joining. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Don't... my last word is remember, to you is a hotel room but to the ghost is home. I. Mm. For everyone watching us tonight, if you are haunted in any shape, way, or form, understand that pulling down your pants or lifting up your t shirt is a good way to repulse the haunting. Good night, everybody. Start, practice, start practicing now. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag no bra FNL. <laughs> yeah. We'll see you guys next week, guys. Uh, have Bye. a good night. Bye. 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 You are listening to Supernatural Confessions.